We've got one minute and 35.4 seconds per question on the digital SAT math portion. So I'm gonna show you some great hacks with Desmos that's gonna save you a ton of time. So here's number one. In this one, we're given two different functions and we wanna figure out this function arithmetic. Desmos is a master at this. So the first thing that you wanna do is to click in one of the empty cells and I'm gonna type in that first function exactly like I see it. F of X is equal to X plus seven. And then I'm gonna click right below to get another empty cell. Let's click the second function exactly like we see it. G of X is equal to seven X. And then I'm gonna type in that function arithmetic exactly like I see it. So 4f of 2 minus g of 2, and there's your answer, 22. On to this next one. I'm going to do this one graphically. Yes, of course, you could plug in all of those values, but it's so much faster to do this one graphically. So I'm going to type that inequality. Y is less than negative 4x plus 4. And you can see that I've got this inequality with a dashed line. So nothing on the line is going to be a solution. And nothing over here to the right or really above the line is a solution. Now I am going to have to check these points, but the easiest way to check those points is to type them in to separate cells. So the first point is two comma negative one. Okay. Do you see it over there in black? It is definitely not in the shaded solution set. Let's go ahead and type in that second one, which is two comma one, two comma one, also not in the solution set. And then I've got zero comma five not in the solution set. It's gotta be that last one, of course, right? So negative four comma zero, sure enough, there it is right in our solution set. Here we go with number three. Notice my pattern here with these practice questions, one, two, and three. I am given a function or an inequality to type in to Desmos, and number three is the same. I'm gonna start by typing in that function, g of x is equal to x squared plus, arrow over, and then plus 55. Now this problem has been shifted way up, but I wanna find the minimum value. That's gonna be my vertex. Now you could use a formula like negative b over 2a, but I'm not going to. Instead, I want to zoom out. So over here on the right hand side, I've got some really nice tools. Let's go ahead and click zoom out until we see our function. Just doing this nice and quickly. There's our function. Desmos does a nice job of labeling um, minimum and maximum values. It also labels intercepts. We just wanted this minimum value, which is 0, 0,55. I look down through my list, they want the minimum value, not input. So our minimum value is the Y value, which is 55. So in this one, we're asked how many real solutions does this equation have? A little bit of algebra, a square root on both sides would tell you that there are zero, but when you come up to an equation like this, you can type it into Desmos. If I start to type it into Desmos, just like I see it, I'm using that little caret key for um, squared and then equals negative four. I don't really see anything, but I wanna know when is the left-hand side side equal to the right hand side. So we could type y is equal to, this is a way that you can solve equations with Desmos, um, power two. Okay, so y equals, okay, so when is the left hand side, which is this parabola, equal to the right hand side, and I'm going to let that be its own graph as well, negative four. So if you were stuck, on this or any other equation, you can solve it in this way. When is my line, y equals negative four, equal to or share points with my parabola? The answer is never, so I would choose zero, answer D. To get to the answer of number five, we're gonna use one of the amazing features of Desmos that your graphing calculator does not have. In this particular problem, we're given a line with this equation 2y equals 4.5, and it intersects a parabola at exactly one point. But the equation of the parabola that we're given is y equals negative 4x squared plus bx. Our goal is to find that coefficient b. 
we're gonna type in both of the equations that we were given. So I'm clicked here in an empty cell. Let's do that line first. 2y is equal to 4.5, and then clicking on a second empty cell, the parabola exactly as I see it. y is equal to negative four x squared using the caret key on number six. So caret squared arrow over for the rest, and that is plus b times x. Now it recognizes x and y as the coordinates on your plane, but it does not recognize what b is. This is the feature I want you to use. You're gonna click add slider. When you add the slider, it's gonna let you play around with the different coefficients of b. Now, first of all, I'm zoomed way out like I was for that last problem. I'm gonna go over here and click the home button to get to my default viewpoint. So let's click that. And I can pretty easily see that that parabola does not touch the line anywhere. Um, I wanted a positive constant. As I move to the left, I can get it to touch at one point, but I really want a positive constant here. So it looks like I'm touching there at b equals six. Let's zoom in a little bit just to be sure. And it does look like we happen to be touching at that point 0.75, 2.25. But the question wanted the value of B, so our answer for this one is B equals six. If you get to one like number six and you're not sure how to analyze the behavior, you can type the table directly into Desmos. To get to the table, I'm gonna use my plus button, hit that plus button, and I want the third one down, which is add a table. I'm gonna type my x's in first. Negative one, enter, zero, enter, and then it guesses, and yes, I do want one next, and I do want two next, which is great. And then clicking over into the first cell under y, these are my f of x's, so 16, 17, um, and 19. Now Desmos does two really nice things over here on the left-hand side. The first one is a zoom fit that will get you a really nice view of these points and it did exactly that. So I can see that these are linear and they are increasing. So I've got my answer here. But if you weren't sure, it also has this great regression tool. I can click on, it's a little graph that's got some points and a line on it. I can click on this add regression and I can test the different regressions. The first drop down option is linear regression. It's exactly what I've got. It's a linear regression which is increasing. Our answer would be B. But if this happened to be an exponential, you can also explore the other regressions that it gives you. I'm already here for number seven. In this one, we are given the equation of a circle and we know that the point AB lies on the circle, which is a possible value for A. I'm gonna graph this and I'm gonna do um, x plus four, x plus four squared plus y minus 19, power two, arrow over, equals 121. So I've got my graph, which I can't see. So let's go ahead and zoom out until I can see that graph. We wanna know which of these four is a possible value for A. Well, A is my X coordinate. So I really wanna know, could X be negative 16? So in another empty cell, I'm gonna type in X equals negative 16, and I can see that that line does not cross the circle. Now let's just back arrow. I'm just gonna backspace or delete. So I've got X equals, and I can type in negative 14. Negative 14 is a possibility. I can check the others just to make sure, but look how quick this is. Definitely not 11 and then definitely not 19. Really, really quick to come up with that answer of negative 14. Number eight is also a circle question. They've given me the equation of that circle, but it's not in standard form. If I wanted to find the radius of the circle algebraically, I would need to complete the square but you've got Desmos. So I'm gonna just type that in. Let's click on an empty cell and then X squared, arrow over, um, plus Y squared, plus four X minus two Y equals negative one. 
it wants to know what the radius is. So I'm going to start by looking for the diameter. Desmos by default will give you the maximum and the minimum points for any graph. So my maximum is here at negative 2 comma 3. It's got a y value or a height there of 3. And it has a minimum there of negative 2 comma negative 1. So the distance between the minimum and the maximum, these two endpoints, would be 3 minus negative 1, which you can even just do here or I've got a distance of four. That's my diameter. I would need four divided by two, which is two, answer A. In number nine, we're given this point, three comma six, and that point lies on the graph of that given function, but take a look at that function. There's an unknown coefficient B, and we wanna know what the value of B is. Desmos is gonna let me type in that point, so I'm gonna do that, which is three comma six. Okay, so three comma six. Notice it up there, I'm just gonna click, drag, and hold so I can see that point just a little bit better. And I'm also gonna type in my function. Looking in another empty cell, I can type in that function. So equals 3x caret 2 arrow over minus bx plus 12. And it says, do you wanna add a slider? Of course, I want to add a slider. And I don't even see my parabola right now. Oh, there it is. As I move the slider, I can see that I need to move this down beyond 10. To change my slider scale so that it goes out further, I'm gonna click right next to B equals 10. So if I click there, it allows me to change that minimum and maximum. So B is gonna go from what to what. Um, let's go from zero to, I don't know, how about 30? Doesn't really matter. Um, and then the step also doesn't matter, but you can do maybe 0.1 and then enter. Now I can continue to move this down and it looks like when I am at 11 there, I end up with my point. I can even verify this and I can say, let's see, my input would be three. I would get a six back. What is F of three? Sure enough, the Y value for three is six. In number 10, we are given the system of equations and we want to find the values of A and B. Let me see, for which of the following values does the system of equations have exactly two real solutions? Well, I know that I can use sliders for this. So let's go ahead and type in Y equals three. So I've got Y equals three and it's given me um, this parameter, Y is between what and what. I'm just gonna skip over all of that and just move to the next empty cell. And then Y is equal to AX squared plus B. And I do want a slider for all of these. Now that I've got this set up, it's asking me to test which of the pairs below. So I'm gonna go through each of those choices and rather than using the sliders to do it, I'm gonna click next to the number. Right now it says A equals one and I'm gonna change that to a negative two. And then next to B, B equals, I want two, not one, so B equals two. And I can see that I don't have two solutions here. Moving on to part B, B is negative two with B equals four. So let's do B equals four. I think I found my solution. So A is negative two, B is equal to four. We lucked out with the second option being the answer, but you might need to check more. Now that you've got these tools, go practice, practice, practice. You're gonna do fantastic on your SAT. I've got more Desmos for you here.